Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which consists of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundations of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which will be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the ears of the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children of Israel that may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just want to get into a very brief lesson and share an article with you, Akiyam and Akwaf, uh, from the People's Voice, uh, pretty much going into uh, this bill uh, that was recently passed, going into uh, anti-Semitism awareness. And what it does is it pretty much um, supersedes uh, the Constitution, okay, regarding uh, freedom of speech. And you know, we understand, you know, Esau Edom, the so-called white man. You know, he's in a he's in a He's in a straight, okay, which is a position of difficulty. He's in a position where nothing is going his way, okay? He's been found out. He's been spotted, okay? He's been revealed. And now what he's doing is he's trying to wiggle his way, okay, out of the judgment, okay, that's written in infamy for him via the biblical, via, via biblical prophecy, man, okay? Judgment is pending for evil E. You see, and he knows that. So he's trying everything in his power, okay, to, to stop up prophecy, okay, by, by pretty much canceling out the Bible, man, which is part of prophecy. Because scripture goes into how uh, there will be a famine of the word. You see, the famine of the word is biblical. And this is the time we're coming into. We're coming into the time of the famine of the word. You see, this is why we tell you, Jake, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, speckled birds, okay, that may look like the other nations, but your bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, you gravitate to this word, okay, you call on the names of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, and, if you, and you've repented, okay, we're telling you, uh, for those of you that haven't, we tell you to repent, okay, turn back to the Lord, because we're in a time where Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai is going to turn away his face, okay, and he's going to allow the modern day Assyrian, okay, which is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, to open up on, on, on the inhabitants of the earth, man, okay, in the form of what? Jacob's trouble, which is going to come into its perfection right here in Babylon the Great, okay, which is America, you see, but ultimately, you know, this man pushing forth these unrighteous decrees uh, in the form of this bill, you know, his smear campaign, uh, all right, that he has rolling, um, in regards to uh, trying to persecute you know, the men of the Lord and the believers, all it's going to do is work against him. Okay, all he's doing is accelerating um, his removal and judgment that's going to come upon him. So, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, the first scripture I want to get into, let's get this real quick before we grab this article. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37. And verse 12, and it reads, The wicked. Which is Esau, in the phone chimed in. Which is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man pursuing the Malachi 1 and 4. He is the wicked. Okay? The so-called white man, woman, and child. Okay? They're coined as the border of wickedness. Okay? When you read Malachi 1 and 4. Right? The wicked plotteth against the just. The just being the elect. Okay? Of the nation of Israel, man. And gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Okay? And his teeth... Is likened unto his military, man. And we know that the UN troops, those boots are going to touch down. All right? And pursuing the second Ezra 16, which we may get. Okay? They're going to be um, seeking out. Okay? Those that fear the Lord, man. Okay? But hey, don't get it twisted. There's going to be a divine covering over the elect. Because upon that happening, the chosen is going to be known. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to be doing miraculous things for his elect. You know, real quick, 
I want to get this word plotteth real quick. And we'll get it in a modern term, which is plot. A quick definition, Google. What's it going to? Right? The plan, scheme, or main story of a literally of so, excuse me, Salakia, of a literary or dramatic work as a as a play, novel, or short story. Right? Hey, pretty much what? A scheme. Okay? This man is scheming on the elect. Okay, and this and this article we got proves it. Okay, because ultimately this man wants to cancel out the word. All right, because he knows this this word's revealing him. The gospel going forth and its true veracity is the number one threat to Esau, Edom, the so-called white man's empire, man. Okay, and he knows that. He understands these things. This is why he's rolling out these unrighteous decrees, man. You see? His time is coming to an end. Check this out. Back in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, in verse 13, right? And it reads, The Lord shall laugh at him. Why? For he seeth that his day is coming. Okay, so the physician is coming to cut off a long disease, which is Esau Edom, the so called white man. He's that disease. Yahweh Shai is that physician. And he's coming to cut him off, man. Okay? And Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, can see his demise creeping up on him. That's why he has the doomsday clock, okay, that they watch ever so closely. Because they know that they don't have forever. They know that they don't have a perpetual blessing. You see? And this is what it boils down to, man. It boils down to the birthright. Okay, this man is trying to steal the birthright back, man, from Jacob. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Okay, no matter how many unrighteous decrees you put forth, okay, no matter how much uh, hell you try to put on the hopeful elect, guess what? Pursuing the biblical prophecy, the slanderer of our brethren, the accuser of our brethren is going to be casted down. Pursuing the Revelations 12. Real quick, let's get this article. Right, this is from the People's Choice and it's dated May 3rd, 2024. And the title reads, Rep. Matt Gates." New anti-Semitism anti bill Will outlaw the Bible Right, why? <laughs> because it limits your freedom of speech Okay And as far as this true gospel going forth Our, our stance now, Okay, is anti-small hat, man Why? Because we testify that we're the chosen Okay, which automatically Deems them imposters, man You see? And he knows that This is why he's conjured up this bill Check this out, right? Rep. Matt Gates, right, has slammed the new hate speech bill passed by the passed by the House Wednesday, so he's against it. Check it out, warning that he ex that the expanded definition of anti-Semitism will result in the criminalization of the Holy Bible, man. Proving that evil E, okay, in the form of these global elites, they're trying to pinpoint and target the prophets, man, the servants of the Lord. You see that? Check it out. Gates raised the alarm of the bill's working definition of contemporary examples of anti-Semitism that includes claims of JWs deleting Yahweh Shai. Check it out. Anti-Semitism is wrong, but this legislation is written without regard for the Constitution, right? And A, they don't give a damn about the Constitution, man. Okay? You regular Joe six-pack Edomites... I damn near pretty much on the same playing field uh, as, as uh, Israelites, man. Hey, and that's why these uh, right wing, uh, uh, die hard American, uh, regular Joe six pack Edomites, they're enraged, man. Okay, this is, this, hey, you can already see the Civil War conjuring up. You can see it manifested, man. Because they've come to the conclusion, okay, that they're higher ups. Have, have have stripped them of the blessing. They didn't share. <laughs> hey, the regular Joe six pack eat them as they're gonna be tripping, man, soon come. Which is gonna trigger this this civil unrest, the civil war, which is biblical. See? Let's continue on. Let's get a little more here. Uh let's see. 
continuing on common sense or even the common understanding of the meaning of the of the words. So let me read this from the top. Anti-Semitism is wrong, but this legislation is is written without regard for the Constitution, common sense, or even the common understanding of the meaning of words. Right. And speaking of meaning of words, anti-Semitism. That's not even. That's not even correct. So what's sem? What's sem? It's shem. Okay. Which we're shem. We we from we come from shem. One of Noah's sons, man. Okay. So does uh, Moab. Moab comes from Shem. Elam comes from Shem. But guess what? We come from that chosen line of Shem. There's a chosen seed line out of Shem. You see? Which the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans stem from. You see that? So he going off there. And that's why when these people come up to the camps with these talking points, we got to ask these people, what is Shem? What is Semitic? Okay? Make it make sense. You can't because it doesn't. Continuing on, right? The gospel itself would meet the definition of anti-Semitism under the terms of this bill, which would what? Cancel out the gospel being able to go forth, which again is biblical prophecy, man. It's biblical prophecy, man. And ultimately the persecution is going to come rolling in. You see? And we mentioned it. Let's just go get it real quick. We'll close out here. And again, this lesson wasn't meant to be long. Let's go here. Let's go back to the scriptures real quick. Let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra. The 16th chapter. Starting at the 68th verse. And it reads, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude, which are those UN troops, okay, them boots are going to touch the ground, is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you being idle, right, they're going to take away certain of us, and bring us where? To these FEMA detention centers, man, where we're going to be idle, right, not being able to go as we please, right, with, and, right, check this out, with things offered unto idols, man, which is going into that karagma, right, that's, that tip, Okay, that digital device, the size of a grain of rice, pursuant to Revelations 13 and 16, which is the mark of the beast, man. Okay, check it out. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision, right, a laughing stock, right, and in reproach and trodden underfoot. So you, Jake, that agree, okay, with the murderer and allow this man to climb inside you with his with his idol, you gonna, man, you gonna, hey, you gonna, uh, <laughs> hey, you gonna, you gonna die with a chip in you, man. Whether you be uh, starved out, okay, which is the part of the biblical prophecy, which is famine. Whether you get caught up by teeth of wild beasts, okay, whether you get hit with the pestilence. Hey, ultimately, we know if you get this thing, you're going to catch a, you're gonna catch a, a grievous sore in the form of cancer, pursuing the Revelation 16. So you out of here, Jake. Okay, those of you think that you're going to save your life. Check it out. For there should be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection. Upon those that fear the Lord. And when you get this word insurrection for edification. Insurrection. The act or an instance of revolting, especially violently against civil or political authority or against an established government. In this case, it's going to be against those that fear the Lord. Let's read it again. Second Ezra 16 and 70. And it reads... For there shall be in every place, in every place, see? And in the next cities, a great insurrection, a violent uprising, man. Okay, against who? Upon those that fear the Lord. Who's that? First and foremost, the servants, the prophets, and you believers, man. See? Wait, there's more. Right? They should be like madmen. Who? Those UN troops, man. They should be like madmen, sparing none. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. You see that? Hey, but guess what? It doesn't end there. Let's continue on. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. See, so wait, we're going to be like pilgrims on the earth, man. It tells you that in this same chapter. That the days of trouble are him. We're going to be like pilgrims on the earth. We're going to have to move around. You see? Check it out. 
Here's the point right here. Second Ezra 16 and 7, 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen man. And they shall be tried as the gold and the fire. So it's going to take this, 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 this level of persecution and efforts for the chosen to be distinguished. And the phone chimed in, man. Because we got to understand how the Lord operates, man. The Lord operates in a time in, 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 in time where we're in a position of difficulty. As a matter of fact, let me close out right here. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter 35 and verse 20, and it reads, Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. You see? As clouds of rain in the time of drought. So guess what? Those that qualify for that mercy, which would be the elect, and what mercy is this specifically? The sure mercies of David. Okay? Are going to be delivered from the affliction, from the persecution, from the insurrection that's written to come upon the believers, man. You see? And granted, hey, we know Revelations 20 and 4 goes into martyrs. There's got to be martyrs. To fulfill biblical prophecy. But guess what? Even in that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to still have mercy on them. Why? Because that's going to be their golden ticket. Okay? Into the first resurrection. Matter of fact, let me close out right here. Bear with me. Let's prove that. And we're going to close out right here. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Let's start at verse 15. Verse 16 is the point. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15, it reads, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. What's that mean? Those that have passed on into the spiritual world. Those that are alive and remain are not going to prevent those that have had to get called back to the Lord. Okay? Why? Check it out. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Yahweh, power, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. That golden ticket. So we don't give a damn about what evil is talking about. You see? He can take this bill and the rest of the bills and unrighteous degrees that he got. And he can shove it up his ass, man. Because ultimately, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, he's the judge. Okay? Who is this that saith, and it cometh to pass, and the Lord commanded it not? See, we don't fear evil. We fear Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, man. That's all we fear. You see? And as long as we walk in the spirit and be led by the spirit, we got nothing to fear, man. Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is going to guide us to the finish line, man. But fear not, neither doubt. You see? Remember, Aki, I'm fair not and neither doubt. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to be our guide, man. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Aki Yam and Akwaf were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Call Halalium La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Kwadash, Shalom.